Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Sorry if you haven't been around for the last week, been on vacation. Um, but back now, Historic ranked this year, so we're going to be testing out a bunch of different decks for the format. Um, with Historic, it is the non-rotating format on Arena. So it's basically all the cards on Arena, plus every so often they add injections of anthologies. Um, with the most recent anthology, uh, we got a pretty powerful card for the deck we're playing today. Uh, this is a blue-green merfolk, or fish deck as they're usually aforementioned named. Um, so Mirror Regery is an older card. Uh, it is a lord in the sense that it gives our merfolks plus one one. And whenever we cast a merfolk spell, you can tap or untap uh, another permanent. So you can use this to either ramp yourself ahead, you can tap down your opponent's blockers. Uh, so there's some shenanigans you can do there. It's also a lord that works well with like merfolk uh, misbinder to just make our little dorks uh, much more powerful. So the entire deck is full of merfolk creatures. Uh, in the one drop slot you have Mist Cloaked Herald, which is a one mana unblockable. Playing this over the two mana version, uh, that gets bigger when you cast more merfolks. I think just coming down on one is more effective. Uh, Kumina Speaker is a one mana 2-2 two -two effectively in this deck. Uh, you have Silver Gill Adept, which in most times is going to be a two mana enter the battlefield draw card. You have Trickster, which can tap stuff down at instant speed. Uh, Deep Root Elite is uh, one that I want to test out. Um, it's usually good when you can get it down early, but we want to see how effective it is. So I'm playing with three for now. Um, so whenever uh, another Merfolk enters the battlefield in your control, you get to put a 1-1 one -one counter. So a lot of the theme here is putting counters on as well, um, which plays an effect uh, to make your stuff bigger. So you can kind of play around with that too. Um, Mistbinder and Rejury, as I mentioned. A couple Kumenas. This is a legendary creature. Um, so we don't want to draw multiples, but it is a 3 mana 2-4. Um, so you can tap another untap uh, Merfolk, and Kumena cannot be blocked this turn. Tap 3 Merfolks to draw a card, or tap 5 to put a counter on all your Merfolks. I'm actually trying a couple Uro in the deck, although not a Merfolk. It gives the deck some resiliency uh, late game if you were to have your board wiped. Usually with these decks you want to provide some critical mass. Of creatures so if you get board wiped it hits you pretty hard so this allows us to cast cards from our exile cards from our graveyard and then gain some life and draw some cards uh, so it's just kind of playing with that deep water uh, deep root waters is a interesting card to play around here so it's three mana uh, whenever you cast a merfolk spell you get a one uh, one one uh, hexproof merfolk uh, they're very good if you could put counters on them as well um, so it allows us to go pretty wide in that case and then another card i want to test out and very well, like this can be cut likely for a deep water, a deep root elite, and uh, Kumena if it doesn't play out as I think it will. Um, but this is Seafloor Oracle, four mana, top of the curve here. Uh, whenever a Merfolk you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So it's kind of a way to refill our, car our hand. And then with us making some pretty big creatures, I want to throw in a Great Henge. It allows us to snowball and cast a bunch of stuff. Uh, mana base pretty simple. You have Breeding Pool. Uh, you have the Hinterland Harbors from the old set, and then Unclaimed Territory, we can name Merfolk and go from there. Uh, the sideboard is really just about tempo, um, so Mystic Repeal versus Artifacts or Enchantment, or sorry, just Enchantments. A couple Aether Gusts versus the Red matchup, there's a lot of Mono Red Burn. A Stroke, basically to catch like Board Wipes. Uh, Coppola is one that I want to try out as well. Um, basically, Taxes Removal makes it cost two more if it targets a Merfolk you control. And activate abilities as well so if like they want to down tick on teferi they have to pay two mana to do so some mystical disputes um, i'm opting to go mystical dispute over spell pierce just because it has a wider range of applications can hit everything not just creatures a couple ashioks for all the graveyard combos um anything with like lotus or um under world breach uh hit those the cat combos stuff like that and then a tempest caller is for the field of the dead matchup it's basically sleep, uh, for the, but they do get to untap, but you can just tap down their stuff and then alpha strike in if they make a big board state there. Um, but against field, you really want to just get a big miscloak going and then kind of uh, attack them through that way. Um, so we'll try it out, see how it goes. Uh, we do have historic rank, uh, plat 4, haven't played in a bit. Um, this meta is very new to me, so some of these decks will be the first time uh, I'll be seeing some of them, but we'll navigate it together. So I'm going to be playing this, I'm going to be building a uh, 
probably some version of Knight of the Reliquary, Ghost Quarter, uh, Lock. So basically destroy all your opponent's lands. Uh, I was playing a bit of Jeff Hoogland's uh, Yarrick Field deck, which was a deck that I really liked back in Standard. Uh, I got to Mythic with it as well. The deck's sweet in the one game I played thus far. Probably I'll feature that. I'll play a couple of different field decks. I love Field of the Dead. You can probably build a Gates deck again, which would be pretty budget. So I'll probably feature something like that. Um, just as a historic budget option. Probably do that one first, just if newer players are getting in. Uh, you probably have a lot of the cards from Standard. Opponent goes first. Uh, this hand's pretty sweet. We have Silvergill to... Okay, so this is probably Blue-White Control, which is going to be a tough matchup if they have removal, and this is why we have Uro, who Esper. Well... We're going to see the value of these deep roots now. We drew all three of them in our opener. So would it really would have liked a one drop if we could get it? Esper Hero. So I'm going to see if they take the trade. Advantageous either way for us. So next turn, I can deep water and silver gill showing a silver gill, or I can just double silver gill because then I won't have to pay the tax. Probably end up doing that, just diversify my threats. Okay, so they have to ferry. They probably bounce the deep water, a deep root. I'm gonna keep saying deep water, aren't I? That's interesting. Why you don't name or bounce that one. So Miss Cloak Herald's pretty solid as well. That gives us unblockable, which I like. So I think we go this. Put a counter here just so it can block. And then I think what I want to do is perhaps show, I think I want to draw a card because if I could hit a land then I could play three spells next turn. Hey Quantum, how's it going? So let's just reveal, going well, just got back from vacation. Playing some magic. So I'm just going to differentiate my threats. That's actually pretty solid as a lord. Is your, uh, did you finish school or are you on lockdown? Okay, so that's probably why they get the deep root. Okay, so here we didn't draw the land. So I think what we do is we go Deep Root, Silver Gill, trying to hit a blue source here. The Great Henge isn't bad. So they can chump or they can multi-block and kill it, but they don't want to likely trade off those. The Great Henge won't be bad if we can get it going. If I can take this off the battlefield, we don't really have removal. I'd be annoyed if they have another deputy. Okay, so this is an interesting play. They probably take the Great Henge is my guess. So Teferi does go up to three here. So I probably won't want to go. 
Actually, I can probably commit to this because if they want to keep their Teferi alive, they'll have to throw away their stuff. Opponents reading through the clock. They take the Great Henge. Okay, they did miss line drop here, which bodes pretty well for us. Um, here, let's just go here. So they can trade away some stuff. If they're a creature heavier version, they may not play board wipes main. Okay, they let the fairy die. And then the nice thing is I can untap, hopefully, with the board. Ooh, Meddling Mage. Okay, so this is one of the newer cards, for those of you unfamiliar. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose a non-land card. Uh, spells with the chosen name can't be cast. They can name Seafloor Oracle, but we're just going to smash in for a ton of damage there. Um, in this matchup, I think I want Tempest Caller. Mystical Dispute's interesting. Spells your opponent cast that target a merfolk. Uh, they probably bring in board wipes. Maybe Coppola. So let's see what we cut. Probably get rid of the seafloor oracle. I like the deep root waters, can't be targeted. Um That's weird. I don't care about reviewing the battlefield. Because Mystical Dispute doesn't really deal. And then if they have Teferi, I'm not as interested. I think we just do that. Deep Root Elite was fine there. I like the Miss Cloak Heralds. Tempest Caller is fine if they get a big board. Maybe cut down on the play, because we're going to be slower. They're going to be bringing in more removal. Maybe just cut a Trickster. Actually, that's probably better than Trickster. Like, at this point, Trickster's not going to do too much. They have a lot of 1-1s, one -ones, so you can tap a couple of them, but them being a Teferi deck doesn't work as well. All right, so... I think we keep this. It lands a little awkward, but what we can do is unclaim territory on one, play Miss Cloak. Actually, that's much better. I'm going Miss Cloak over Kumena only because it lets us attack under. Uh, I should have gone territory. So I'm going to hold it off. If they might get chippy and want to attack in with pre. Okay, they go Othakaya. It's actually quite annoying. Attack. Opponent smartly does not commit there. Let's name Merfolk. Throw down a Lord. Like, we lost the unblockable, which kind of sucks, but at the same time. Our Lord is okay. They go Deputy. It's actually pretty solid. Because with Uro, I can draw a card here.
They can double block one of these. They triple block. So we're gonna do these first. We fake them out there. Drawing another Uro is not the best. Three, two cards really in the graveyard. Yeah, they got big Teferi. So maybe we do want, I don't think we're gonna win at this point. Got Mira Regery. The thing is they can tuck it with Teferi. So maybe what I do is I go these. Do they have a counter spell? They have mystical dispute. Okay, we're dead here. So that might be something interesting with the disputes. Maybe we want our disputes. These Kumenas seem pretty bad, but on the play, I probably want the one drop. Coppola's could come out. They're not the best, have the disputes. Great Henge is good if we can get it off, but they probably have enough to deal with it with like Teferi and stuff. So maybe we cut that. Just try to go all aggro. Silvergill, Deep Root's fine, Deep Root Waters. Kumena can help in board stalls. Maybe it's just Uro. Let's try it like that. Like Uro gets chumped to no end. They have both Teferis to deal with it. And they probably play. This hand is awful. Okay, this hand's better. I think we put back the Tempest Collar. So I'm going to play this out now and then go deep root on three. They have removal, they'll likely target this. I want to keep Kumena going longer. Okay, they go cast down, so that's a card to remember. A little awkward as well as we drew two of our four forests. Um, I would like another blue to hold up. I go deputy here. It's actually pretty good. Um, so they can have a removal spell, but I think we just got a jam cards here. Hope for the best. Atris. Um, let's do this. See if they take like the removal here. Okay, sweet. Figure they get pretty greedy to take the removal. It does answer this pretty nicely. The only thing, maybe I should have done this, because then they play deputy to try to erase something and I could dispute it. So 
So I'm going to put this on the silver gill here. So I'm not going to attack. I can draw a card with Kumena. They may try. Kind of hope they try to jam like five mana to fairy here. They are short of land. No, they have it. So, good chance to see how Kumena does this game. Yeah, I guess if you're not blocking. So this could come in. Hmm. So what we can do here is with I can attack with Kumena. When this comes in, I can untap two things and then draw a card. This comes in, that's another merfolk. Okay, they take the trade there. Let's see what they do here. They could have like another actress. So I'm going to do this before, just in case they name with uh, Meddling Mage. Okay, they got the Dispute. So a little bit punished there for throwing away Silvergill. Could have drawn a card. Will be interesting to see what they name what meddling mage. Basically you can't Uro. <laughs> well, we took those out of the deck, so have fun with that. Okay, so the old five mana silver glow plan. Actually. No, I should have attacked first. I could have attacked and then untapped. That was my mistake. That was my mistake. Because if we done that, I get a free shot. Oh, you know what? Even in retrospect, I should have just un preemptively untapped the land. All right, learning with the deck. That's why we play it. Kumena is putting in work this game. Ooh, okay. So I can attack here. So let's do this. So tap another merfolk. Get some blockable. Play Miss Binder. Um, do this. Because then I could put counters on my team. Deep Root Elite comes out. And then with its third ability, I can tap five Merfolk 
and kind of deal them in that way. So I have Teferi here. We'll see what they decide to go after. That's an interesting one. But I hope they realize I can put counters. So let this come down. Doesn't die. And opponent sees the writing on the wall. All right. Fishies. Fishies doing work there. Get a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, let me give Arena a quick reset. Every I just did the update, and I find when we just do the updates, it gets a little glitchy. So I'll run it for another match there. Um, I don't think I'm crazy about... Uh, I guess if we run into something like Grixis or stuff like that. I might... Like, I like the fact that those merfolks, like the merfolk taps everything, but might want to go sleep instead. Uro also was okay in the matchup. Adding some resiliency. If this was like two mana, I'd play it more, but just when it comes down on curve, it's not as good. I think we run it back, see how it goes. Taking down like Esper with a ton of removal is nice. So let me know as well if there's any particular decks you'd like to see in Historic. As I mentioned off the get-go, I will be doing a Knight of the Reliquary, probably a couple Knight of the Reliquary decks. Um, gonna be doing uh, maybe a Waste Not deck with like Croxa, probably something like that. I'm gonna do a bunch of field decks. I love field. Um, it's very broken when you play it, very annoying when you don't. Uh, okay, so opponent plays first. See how it goes. Opponent should have probably had... Like, I wonder if they brought in board wipes in that first match against us. Because they're playing more... Like, when you're playing with Deputy, you're kind of limited. Like, you have to play Time Wipe, most likely. Uh, just to have something to bounce around. Come on, opponent. Come on. Let me know too if you have any sweet historic decks. Um, I do feature, if you're not like a following on my Instagram, I, I do usually one to two deck a day that I find across either my own brews or like cool decks I find across the internet. Um, if you want any of them featured uh, on the channel or either potentially played on the channel or just on the Instagram to share. It's MTG underscore Joe, the number two at the end. Apparently there was another Joe. Oh my God, opponent. Let's go. This is why we reset in between. Are they afraid of the fighting fish? All right, we're in. Uh, this hand is kind of awkward. Opponent goes first. I'm gonna mulligan. I'm gonna keep and hope we draw a land. Because the hand's pretty gas if we do. We have two draws to draw a land. And every land in our deck comes into play untapped. Come on, opponent. Let 
Might have got disconnected. Hopefully everyone's all right with this whole corona thing. I'm uh, work from home for at least a week to two weeks, and then we'll see how it goes. Get to fight with everyone to get on the server. All right, so opponent likely disconnected there. We will take the win, rank up. Let's play another fish. All right, this one fired up pretty quick. Glitch resonant. So opponents on the play again. This hand is good. Soul sisters. Will they gain more life than we can deal damage? Okay, so they have Pride Mate, which is a bit scary. Again, we don't really possess ways to deal damage. Like, uh, out, or kill creatures. Maybe I want, like, um... Kenrith's transformation or something. Okay, so I went with Deep Root here. Um, it makes my subsequent plays a bit better. Oh, jeez. Not going to be able to beat the double pride mate. Yeah, I think we need to change the sideboard a bit. Or like those bluey prison cards. Yeah. The Soul Warden double a Johnny Pride Mate one is gonna get you. Um, in this matchup, I don't have much. Maybe a couple Tempest Callers, get rid of the Seafloor Oracle. We just need to go wide. Just run it like that. I don't think we can really, maybe this for the Heliod actually. Like they're most likely playing Heliod. Let's play that. Just try to make a big board and then smash in. We need to fix the sideboard. I don't think this is where uh, how we win. So I'm keeping this hand just because it cycles through itself pretty well, and the deep waters, the deep root waters, works well. Nice. Chaining these together always feels good. Cool. So that gives us a couple cards to play out that following turn. So next turn, I'm gonna go deep wa deep root waters into Miss Cloak Herald, and then we have these silver gills we can play out afterwards. I don't know if this deck would play like Shadow Spear. Johnny's welcome. Oh, they got Sarah send it. Well, that's gonna kill us really fast. Okay, Mira Regery. Not bad for a following turn. 
this just also gains a ton of life, though. Like, this is what's going to kill us. If they just had Pride Mates this game, it'd be fine. But we're an aggressive deck that doesn't have ways to interact. Okay, so that's... And this is why we play the games. Kind of get a feel. You know what we're not going to beat? A 9-9 nine -nine lifelinker. Yeah, this was one of the better free decks. What did we draw? Deep water. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, uh, we're pretty dead there. Turns out the deck that gains a million life against the deck that wants to deal damage, not the best of, uh, so, Enchant Creature. So we have stuff like Deep Freeze. Yeah, format seems really sweet. Okay, I think we play Frog Frognify. It's probably where we go. Cause these ones, like in that game, they can still get pretty big. I don't want like the sleep paralysis ones. Oh, I forgot this is a card. Then there's Kenrith's Transformation. Cycles, so we draw a card, but they get an elk, which is a little bit bigger. This guy's Cradle, but doesn't really do much for us. Yeah, I think we play Frognify. I don't think we want these Coppolas. Just run it like that. Cool. I'll update the deck afterwards. Let's play out one more. See how it goes. A little annoying that we're a creature based deck that gets hit with Mystical Dispute. It's a powerful card on its own. What have you been playing, Quantum? Uh, which decks in Historic? Uh, this hand is very slow. Maybe we try it. Ah, let's try it. All right, so not the best thing to see turn one. So this might be mono black vampires, could be black white vampires. Conquistador. Kamena's actually sweet. It's big enough to block here. And then next turn I can go probably go mirror regery. Cause then C4 Oracle can draw his cards. This might be mono black vampires. Sorn's pretty gross. Okay, they 
kill that. They don't attack. I'm still gonna go Redry here. It likely dies. But I get to do some chip damage here. Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Yeah, that's a problem. That is a problem. So I can actually go Uro and then play a land and play Deep Root Water, a Deep Root Elite. I'm going to play this out only because it does get bigger. Let's our Kumenas get bigger. <sighs> Do not miss this card. Well, that stumps most of our deck. It's funny how we bet like Esper, but I'm losing to all the jank. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, so I can attack in here, draws us a card, they probably trade. I kind of just need to get these off the battlefield. Depending how they play out next turn. That gets counters too. Because I can tap it down next turn. Which we're probably going to have to. Do I have enough for Uro? I don't. But if I do this, so I do this, I tap down, I can go Uro as well. So maybe let's do that. They could also just not block, which now I can't Uro. I cannot beat you. Well played by the opponent there. Interesting they didn't activate Soren there. So I'm going to block like this, just because this can be unblockable and draw me a card. Um, try to help me get a bit closer. Sorry about that for those who are tuning in. My computer decided now was the best time to install an update and force restarted itself. Um, so we lost that one, we timed out, but the opponent pretty much had us there. So we're just going to play like this and pass the turn. See if they attack in here. We might be able to ambush Viper this. Okay, cool. They don't. So here I'm going to set up the deep root waters. 
allows us to play a better long game. Okay, but I have the Soren. Oof. Getting trucked already. So here. I think we just pass the turn. Okay, so they go Dusk Legion, Zealot. So we'll see what they target here. It's likely Deep Root Elite. So I'm going to do this now, so I get the counters. I think we just put it all on a big one. Tap this down so it doesn't attack this turn. Cast down doesn't do anything. I think we just do this and do this because then next turn what I can do is Kumena and I can start putting counters on the team. Actually, they have to throw away one of these to keep it alive, which I think is a fair trade. That's bad. So we'll do this. So play you out. So we're going wide in this game, which is nice. Okay, they just concede. They didn't even see the Kumena. Um, maybe the Tempest Callers taps down. So we kept so basically this I just brought in the Frognifies, took out a Kumena and the Seagate Oracle, Seafloor Oracle. I think we just run it back. Really this matchup depends like if they have Soren out, it does a hell of a lot of work against us. Combination of damage and lifelink, they have a bunch of just meaningless vampires they can throw away. I'm going to keep this hand. I'm going to go deep root on two. We don't have the deep waters, which would really mm. like. I'm going to do chip damage where we can. Maybe it was right to mull to deep root waters. Okay, they go knight here. No blocks. Land. Frognify. So. I think. We just do this this turn. They cast down. Okay. I was trying to differentiate my threats. Okay, so glad we kept the frogify. Frogify. Gonna keep doing some chip damage here. So, depending what they play here, I'm gonna trickster on the aerialist. 
most likely be the play. Okay, so they do have Murderous Rider. Actually, well, they can't block. So let's do this. It's another good draw. So they can double block one of my things. But I think I'm comfortable just smashing face here. Yeah, because I'd take that trade, taking their night off. Seems like a win for me. Um, I think I just get Kumena here going. It survives around Soren. It survives against Cast Down. Just Murderous Rider gets it in. And I'm probably going to use this Trickster to tap down to be able to attack in. Okay, so they just play out the Murderous Rider. We can get rid of that for the life Flink perspective. That's actually very good. So I can do this, Frognify that. I could put counters on my team. I may just poke in for one. Gonna poke for one. End step, I'm gonna trickster something. That gives me my fifth merfolk. And then I can put counters on my team, making it big enough for all these to attack in. Okay, I have another aerialist. They might try to attack with that just to make these bigger. So tap down that. Then we do our merfolk thing. Kumen has been really good. Yeah, gotcha. Too much to not enough damage. All right, so we took them out. We went two and one with the deck. Three and one technically, opponent timed out, but two and one in games. Uh, I do like the Frogify probably in the side more. Um, so probably something we'd keep in there. Um, but I'd probably keep this as my deck list. Deeper Elite was good, not great. Uh, Kumena was really nice, so I'd probably up the Kumenas. Uro was fine, a little displaced, but I think in the grindier matchups, it would be something relevant. Um, may want Shadow Sphere, uh, or just maybe even have this be Brazen Borrower. Um, we're a little weak to Flyers, but I think overall the deck's pretty fun, just it lacks like heavy removal, so when you can be the aggressor it's good. Um, and then just decks that can't really, if they give you time to go wide then you can take them down. Um, I'm going to wrap this one up, I'll be back with more historic content throughout the week. Um, and if you have any suggestions, do drop a note on my YouTube channel. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great one.